Okay. So last but not least, we have our unique units here. So again, like I said, I'm just going to go through them pretty quickly here. So first one we got is Ballista Elephant. It's kind of like an elephant, like the HP of an elephant, but the attack style of a scorpion. I'm not sure whether or not it has a minimum range or not, but it can cut through trees, which is kind of an interesting thing, but typically you don't see it in actual games. I think if you could mass enough of them, they could probably be like a decent unit to make, but in general, they're just not that, uh, they're just not, uh, that popular I think that they're just not they lack like the they're just too expensive I think for for like the value you get out of them so yeah again they probably do bonus damage versus like some units like pipe they probably do bonus damage against uh actually I don't have no idea we're just gonna skip them you, you ra rarely ever see them in a game only pe people that troll use these this unit next unit is camel archer by the way um ballista elephants a uh, unit made by the Khmer or Hummer, or whatever. Um, but yeah, you don't really see them very often. Elite Camel Archer. This is a unit that's made by the Berber civilization. This is actually quite a good unit for this, for Berbers. Uh, it has a technology that allows it to regenerate health. It's mobile, and it does a decent amount of damage, and it's not too expensive. So, um, it does bonus damage versus uh, cav, uh, cav, cav Archer units. So it does good versus um, Cav Archers. It does good against, like, I think it does pretty good against, like, Mangadize. Um, conquistadors, those types of units. Um, but like I said, yeah, it, has re it can regenerate and it's mobile and it's ranged and yeah. Most range units, um, most cavalry range units uh, or cav archers or whatever are used in in the game except for like slow ones like these ballista elephants. Next up is a Rambai. It's a Burmese uh, unique unit. It's also again a ranged cavalry unit. It only costs wood and gold. It's quite strong. You see it has 19. Well, this is the Elite. These are all Elite versions, so they're a little bit stronger than what you'd see in Castle Age, but it, it's a very strong unit. Um, you typically see it in in Castle Age from Burmese. Um, Burmese are really strong in Castle Age just because of this unit. It does good against pretty much all units. I guess like the biggest weakness of some of these ranged Cav Archer units is that they don't do as good against them. Um, like if somebody masses enough crossbow, then th these units don't do as good because... Um, like, um, the Rambai don't benefit from ballistics in the same way that uh, Crossbow do. Um, so, yeah, they're not as good. But if you combine a Rambai with Mangonels, then they basically can kill any, like, unit in the game. Like, in Castle Age, at least. Um, and later later on in the game, they're, they're still, like, a decent unit, but they're just not as strong as they are in Castle Age. Alright, the Magyar Hussar, which, by the way, looks pretty cool. I don't know if it looked that cool before, but... Basically, it's actually very similar to the regular Hussar. The only benefit is that it does bonus damage versus siege units, and it does it, it is like a stronger version of the um, light cavalry. Like you see, normal Hussar seven damage. This one does ten damage, right? Um, so yeah, and there's a technology that makes it so they don't cost any gold, so they basically cost the same as the normal Hussar. Um, you see, the, um, th there are there. They belong to the Magyar civilization. Sometimes you see them in like in like a in like a game, depending on how like you typically see them later on in the game. Like, yeah, that's just they're not like super overpowered, but they are like a strong unit. Cataphrac is a unique unit by the Byzantine civilization. They do bonus damage versus infantry, so it's the one unit I'm not 100 percent sure whether or not they are countered by halberdiers or not because, like. Halberdier counter all cavalry units basically, with the exception of the, some of the cav archer units and um, maybe the cataphract. I'm not 100% sure. The only issue with cataphracts is that they're extremely expensive to upgrade the technology. Um, one of the technologies they benefit from is uh, I think it's called logistica, and it allows them to do trample damage, which is like the same as like what I said that battle elephants do, which is that area of effect damage around them. And so yeah, they're a really strong unit, but again, I'm not sure that. Uh, you don't see them very often because they're so expensive, but they, they are quite good. Okay, so here's the condo. We already talked about the condo, so we won't go back into it, but it basically it's just that anti-gunpowder unit. Um, it's quick. It's about as strong as a two-handed swordsman, but it's only accessible by Italians or their teammates. So yeah. Okay, next up is the Turks Jan Janissary, and it's the um, castle unit for the Turks. So um, it's a gunpowder unit, so again, it's strong versus infantry, but again, like we like the normal hand cannon here, it has that extra. It has such a high attack that it does quite good against um, 
it does quite good against um, like knights and stuff like that. The weakness is kind of similar to these cav archers in that um, crossbow do quite good if they get ballistics because janissaries don't benefit from ballistics. But the thing is, is again, if you mix janissaries with um, mangonels, then it's very hard to counter that because um, janissaries kill mangonels in like three shots. So they're they're a very strong unit, and you see a lot of people that are when people play the Turk civilization, they usually try to go for janissaries in like castle age. Next up is the Wode Raider, which is an infantry unit used by the Celts. It's quite quick, and it does bonus damage versus buildings. Um, this is probably the Wode um, the Celts' main unit in Imperial Age. You don't really see it in Castle Age because again. Um, Crossbows do quite good against like infantry in Castle Age, and I think even like knights will do pretty good against Wode Raiders when they're not when they're not the elite version. So um, I think the I checked before, but I think the strength of a Wode Raider is not, is kind of comparable to that of a um, Cavalier, but it's not like it, it's I don't know it's just it's cheaper. It doesn't cost as much gold. So like Cavaliers cost seventy five gold, and Wode Raiders I think cost twenty five gold. So it, it's quite nice. It's um, it, it the speed of it and the HP and the cut the gold cost of it make it a very like strong unit in the late game. Um, but again, the speed is the big thing because usually crossbows can kite boat raiders, but um, but the thing is, is like once you're in Imperial Age and you can mass a lot of boat raiders, you can't really kite anymore because it takes too much effort. They're also a really good raiding unit. That's why they're called road raiders. It's really they're like really strong. With, if you just send them into the opponent's economy, you kill a lot of villagers very quickly. Next up is the Incas Kamiak, and this is a basically a stronger version of the. Actually, it's like a mix between a halberdier and a champion. So it doesn't do as much damage to. Um, it doesn't do as much damage like one on one versus cavalry units. It doesn't have that same that same strength in the bonus damage, but it it has a one range for infantry, which basically means that with its long spear, it can like bunch up on each, like if you have a lot of them, they can bunch up together and do a lot of damage versus the um, versus like cavalry. Whereas halberdiers and stuff like that, they can't stack. So like in some ways, it's stronger versus cavalry units, but in other ways, it's it's weaker, like one-on-one uh, -on -one it's weaker. The nice thing about them though is that they have a like relatively high attack damage here, whereas like Pikeman and Halberdier are a lot are quite a bit weaker. And it also has more HP. So it does better against like I don't know if it does I don't know if it would win against like champions one-on-one, -on -one, but it might. I would expect that it probably can beat um, Eagle Warriors, but again I'm not hundred percent sure. But yeah, you do see this unit like like sometimes when people are playing Incas just because it kinda is like a nice hybrid unit. A cross between a champion and a um, champion and a um, halberdier or whatever. I think it's a bit quicker too. It seems a bit faster. Next up is Chuko Nu, and this is the Chinese unique unit. It's a very strong unit. It shoots several like arrows. It shoots like four arrows or something like that. And um, these are like on, this is just the elite version, but I think when it's upgraded, it does like plus it does like plus seven or something like that. It's, like something quite good. Um, the nice thing about Chuko Nu's is they do really they do quite well against siege. Like siege ramp, to, like I mentioned earlier, does quite good at soaking up archer fire. But since this unit shoots like four or five arrows per shot, that means it's going to do four to five damage per shot to a uh, ram. And so if you match up, match up like forty of these things, then it'll kill rams like with ease. Whereas like normal arbalist won't. Uh, normal arbalist will take like two hundred shots to kill. This one will take like again, it's two hundred shots, but it's like essentially like forty shots, right? These units, when they're massed up, they just melt everything. I mean, they're, they're so strong, it's just it's insane. Um, they're not usually a unit you're going to go for like in Castle Age as like a primary unit. It's more of a unit that you're going to transition to in Imperial Age or late Castle Age. But th they are very strong. The, the, the biggest weakness of the Chukonu is the range is kind of low, and so like in Castle Age, they struggle against like Mangonels. But other than that, they're really quite good. And they basically, like I said, kill everything, the exception being like Huskarls and Eagle Warriors, maybe Elite Eagle Wars. Next uh, unit is the Berserk. Um, Berserk's got changed a couple times in the last few years. Um, it's the Vikings uh, unique unit. 
And basically it has um, HP regeneration, or there's at least one tech that gives it HP regeneration. I think it actually it naturally has it, but there's a tech that increases it. And basically the Berserk is somewhere, it's like a stronger version of a champion with HP regeneration. And then also there's a tech that allows it to do like bonus like 5 damage versus cavalry. So it even does quite good against um, I think like cavaliers. I think it probably actually beats cavaliers. But um, but yeah, it's um it's one of those units that if you can get to and then like a 1v1 or a team game maybe, it, it's probably a pretty decent unit. Um, the other unit that you might make as Vikings is a... Uh, Arbalist, but I think um, if you can get to Berserk, they're again they're more expensive because they cost food, but they don't cost as much gold. I think it's like again 20, 25 gold, uh, and they're quite a strong unit. But um, but yeah, you do need quite a big economy to mass them. So um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like I guess com again comparing them to all units, Arbalist can do better than them, but it just depends on the situation. Gunpowder does better, does pretty good against them. Um, but again, I think they do pretty good against. They'll, they'll kill all this, all the infantry line, and then even th they'll do quite well against. I think the um, caval uh, cavalry line as well. Next up is the elite Crambert warrior, which is oh, wow! I didn't even know it. it can like run between units. That's like something that I don't think other units can do. I'm not sure though. So the Crambert is the Malay unique unit, and it's a very cheap unit. It's like somewhere like 30 food and 15 gold or something like that. And I believe it only counts as half of a population space, which means you can mass up a lot of them. And so the strength of the Crambit Warrior is is not in the stats, the, it's its own, like, it's really not its stats um, as an individual. It's the fact that, like, if you have, like, a hundred of these things, they just are impossible to stop because it's just impossible to, like, really react against a hundred Crambit Warriors. Like, whether or not they're attacking your army or, like, raiding or some combination of the two, it's just so hard to deal with that many units attacking you at one time, and so that's really the strength of the melee of of, of this unit. Um, I'm not really sure. I haven't seen it recent like a lot recently since they uh, nerfed it a little bit, but I still think it's quite a good unit. Again, it's kind of similar to the um, berserk in that you do have to have a, quite a good economy to start like massing up a lot of them. But uh, yeah, and, and that's kind of true of all the unit, all of these uh, infantry units is that you do need quite a good economy to start massing a ton of them. But but yeah, it, it does good against. Um, I would say it doesn't do good against. Um, it probably doesn't do super great against elephants or cavalier. But um, but I think against yeah I don't know. The thing is, is when you're when you're Malay, you typically if you're going to make this unit, you're going to mix in like halberdiers with the Crambit, and then you kill Cavaliers easily, because like the Helbs will kill the Cavaliers, and then the Crambits will kill the Skirms, or, or whatever else that they have, right? So typically, you don't make this unit by itself. Um, like, if you're against Archers, you'd make the Crambit, and then like, um, Elite Skirms. And, and so, yeah. Anyways, next unit is the Elephant, Elite Elephant Archer, which According to a game I saw Viper playing yesterday, it doesn't appear on... seems like there's might be some rendering issues with the Elite Elephant Archer because he was playing against Bact yesterday and Bact could not see the Elite Elephant Archer, which is kind of funny considering how big the elephant is. But anyways, um, this is an Indian's unique unit. It's not really that um, popular because Indians also get Imperial Camels, which is a very, is a very strong unit. And um, so typically you don't see it that often. I think that there might be some cases where you know it's it, it's decent, but again, it, it requires a lot of economy. All these elephants cost a lot of all these elephant units cost a lot of food, and so it, in order to be able to mass the economy to make these units is, is very difficult. Um, so in a one v one, it's very rare that you would see it. And, and the other issue is that like these elephants, they cost a lot to make, and it's so easy to counter by making monks because monks can convert them just like nothing. But yeah. Um, yeah, again, they're, they're going to be weak against halberdiers, kind of like all cavalry units. They're going to, the, I guess they're they're strong against range units because they do have extra, they have this armor and they have a lot of HP. So they do quite good against range units like arbalists and I'm not sure how they do against elite skirms, but I'm sure they do good against cav archers as well. Um, against like paladins, I'm sure they probably don't do so good just because paladins are super strong. And, 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 and like heavy camels, I think probably do okay against elite elephant archers as well, but... I'm not sure about that, but yeah, you don't see them very often, so it's kind of hard to say a whole lot about them. 
X is Elite Boyer, and Elite Boyer is a unit that has a lot of extra armor here. I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to check really quick whether or not it has any bonuses against any unit, but um, let's see. Yeah, so there's no actual bonuses for the Boyers. It just has extra armor, so it does probably quite good against... Um, Quite good against um, units like uh, not not these units. I think the halberdier and pikemen still kill boyers pretty nicely. It does probably pretty good against the um, infantry line like uh, militia and stuff like that. It also does quite good, I'm guessing, against other um, melee cavalry based units. So like cavaliers, it probably does pretty good against because you see here it does 12-2. Here we have 14-6. So I mean, cavalier would only do six damage to a boyer. Boyer would do 12 damage, so it does twice as much damage, even a Paladin, if you compare Paladin, yeah, Paladin's basically the same thing, I mean, Fort, yeah, so basically I think Elite Boyer is good against, like, Cavalry units that don't do bonus damage versus, like, Cavalry units not including Camels and, um, and, uh, Infantry units, I think as well, that's where the Boyer does quite good. Um, I haven't seen the Boyer a whole lot, I've used it only a handful of times in the game, and, yeah, but I think it's alright. All right, Gabados are a the unique unit from Malians. They're this like woman that's running around with a I don't know what she has. It looks like she has some axes, and it actually does quite a lot of damage here. And the range isn't bad either. The only issue with Gabados is that they have pretty low HP, and I don't think they benefit from ballistics at all. Um, and so, given that it has such low HP and that it doesn't benefit from ballistics, it means that it dies quite easily to archers, but it does do quite good against knights. Like again, if, it's kind of like um, hand cannoneers in that if you mass a couple of them and um, knights are chasing after you, you can kite, kite the knights quite kite the knights quite easily. The downside again though is is that you have no ballistics, so there's no guarantee that you hit, you hit the shots. And then also the fact that um, knights are faster than than the gabados, so they still will eventually chip away at your numbers over time. Um, but overall you don't really see Gabados very often. Um, they're kind of a nice unit to make if you're Malians and you're getting attacked by, uh, if they're trying to like push you with rams or something, Gabados can be nice to make because this damage here, even though they're a ranged unit, this is actually a physical damage. So uh, the, the rams die quite quickly to Gabados. But yeah. Anyways, next unit, Jaguar Warrior. So this is Aztec's unique unit. It does bonus damage versus infantry. So, yeah, again, it's like a cha it it's it does good in all the same places that a champion does good in basically. Um, but it also does very good against infantry. The probably the only places only infantry that Jaguar Warrior loses against are the uh, Samurai and the Teutonic Knight. But aside from that, Jaguar Warriors I think beat every other infantry unit. So. And then again, I think they probably do okay against, uh, let's see, 12-2-1, 12-2, yeah, I mean, they probably, cost-wise, they probably, um, they probably trade about as well as, like, a Cavalier does. Um, yeah, you don't see them super often, but, um, they're good, they're decent, like, a decently strong unit. Again, you need a lot of economy to make the infantry units, just never forget that. They're normal speed too, so like against Ar like Arbalus will um, kill Jaguar Warriors unless you mass a lot of them. Next unit is the War Wagon, which actually got I think a bit cheaper here in this, the d Definitive Editions. It's the Korean Unique Unit. Um, you do see this unit quite often in Korean when Korean plays, just because they don't have Korean doesn't uh, Korea doesn't um, they don't get a very good cavalry line. So it's hard to go, for, hard to justify going for knights, and war wagon just is a lot, is quite a bit better than um, crossbows just because of its mobility and the fact that it has so much HP. So you see people going for war wagons easily. The hard counter to it would be monks. Monks counter war wagons pretty pretty easily. Um, the strengths of it is that it does quite good against crossbows, and it can do good against knights as well when they're masked. Um, so yeah, and it also does quite good like. Once you have all the armor upgrades on it, you can basically sit under TCs and like raid with war wagons like you would with knights because they don't take very much damage at all from TCs. Um, but yeah, another unit they're quite weak against. Um, 
the, their attacking their attack speed is kind of slow so halberdiers um in in imperial age do can do good, good against war wagons because they can close the distance on them while the war wagons wait to shoot and then they do quite good against war wagons but other than that a lot of um against infantry it's like they don't do bonus damage against infantry so it's all about kiting so if the, if the other person has enough infantry or you're not paying attention they're gonna win against like heavy camels i think the heavy camels will win against like paladins cavalier i think that the cavalier and paladins are just too fast i think they probably kill war wagons. Um, they're, they're like the best unit for Koreans, so you see them quite frequently. But overall, they're they're so they're so so. They're not like amazing, but they're not terrible either. The real nice thing is that when you get to late game, if you can get like sixty or seventy of these things, like a team game or even more, it's so hard to kill that mass because they have so much HP that it just would take forever to kill them all. Next unit's a Tarkin. It's the Hun's unique unit. It's got it's got a lot of extra pierce armor. Um, it's quite good versus range units. Uh, it does doesn't do so good against uh, camels or cavalier. It's just not as strong as the, these two. But it does good against range units. It does really good against buildings. So if you can mass up a lot of Tarkins, you can go and raid and kill a lot of villagers a lot very quickly because they kill the TCs very quickly, and they don't take much damage at all. Um, so yeah, I think exclusively stick to killing range units with these things and killing um, uh, buildings and raiding. I wouldn't uh, go head to head with a lot of these other units um, with Tarkins at least. <clears throat> Next unit. Got two units here. Okay, so Elite Step of Lancer. So this is actually a unit that should have been covered in the stable section. I accidentally misgrouped it. But it is a unit that you can make in the stables with some of the new civs. So, and by new civs, I mean, let's just check. I just want to make sure that I got this right. So, um, Tatar, the Tatars is one of them. Um, the Cumans are another one, I'm pretty sure. Let's see, are the Lithuanians another one? I'm not sure. Nope, not the Lithuanians. And then what was the last one? Bulgarians, right? Okay, so Bulgarians and Lithuanians don't get them, but the Tatars and the Cumans do. So the Elite Step Lancer is basically kind of similar to a knight. It's like a cross between actually like a knight and um, what would be the um, Kamiyuk, which we talked about earlier, which is somewhere in here that I can't... I don't know how you could ever tell what these pictures are. I mean, they're so hard to see. Where the heck is that unit? You think you see it? How do I not see this unit? Oh, here it is. It's hiding. So it's basically like a cross between a knight and the, this Kamiyuk unit here because the Kamiyuk uh, has got that uh, extra one range, which is also what the Step Lancer unit has. The real strength of this thing is that, yeah, when you group this thing up, it is so hard to, like, you can kill a villager. It can kill villagers instantly because you don't no longer do you have to, like, have a like a bunch of knights like surrounding a villager now you just have to get within range like you just need to circle the villager like briefly and just attack it the villagers die so fast the other strength is again i think zero empire has actually released a video of this like last week or something but you get a lot of these things together and they just will shred knights they'll even do good against like halberdiers um if you mass enough of them i i would expect that in the future that this unit's gonna get nerfed so and it's probably something i wouldn't change in my video i i, I would just um look at the stats of this thing right now and if it's not the same then it, it probably got nerfed but it's quite strong um when massed to get when massed up uh, and um i'd say the biggest weakness is that it has no pierce armor and so um if you're going to try to go against this thing i don't know if like making scorpions would be good because scorpions obviously do the they kill bunched up units quite well but um otherwise uh go for like cav archers or something maybe cav archers might do decent against them or crossbow might be okay as long as you don't get overrun by them but yeah they should be with the stable units but yeah they're they're quite strong so if you ever have one of those civs you probably can't go wrong by making this unit just don't try to raid too much like under tc's with them okay next up is rat archer which is the vietnamese unique unit so this is a archer with a lot of pierce armor 
um, and it's also quite quick. So um, I'd say that this is the ideal unit to go for, probably if you're Vietnamese, um, but it's not. Pro it's probably not worth it to go for it in Castle Age, just because, um, just because the uh, cost of making a castle is so expensive. And this unit, even though it's like decent, it's just not like it can be counted pretty easily by mangonels in Castle Age, and and so I think it hurts your economy too much to like if you're playing random map to go for rat and archer in Castle Age. But yeah, it, the pure summer is insane. It does very well against archers, and you can kite um, knights and camels and all that stuff quite easily because of the speed. Um, but yeah, it is kind of a, because Vietnamese don't have a very great economy, it's kind of a tough unit to go for until late game. Um, I don't think, I think skirmishers still counter rat nerders just because they do the bonus attack damage, but it, like I said, it, it, uh, it's a pretty, pretty strong unit. I don't know what else to say about it. I don't, you know, it does bonus damage against pikemen, but that's all archer units, right? Okay, next up, next, uh, holy crap, that unit is so slow, dude. Alright, okay, so next is the War Elephant from Persia. It's Persian's unique unit. So again, this, like, normal elephant does the blast damage. It also has crazy damage, just 20 damage. And it, and like I said, yeah, it does the blast damage, and it has 600 HP. I mean, this is insane. But the biggest weakness, again, if you ever see elephant, this is the elephant's best friend, or worse than me, the monk. As soon as you see these elephants, you start making monasteries or halberdiers. That's all you should be thinking. I think the war elephant does pretty good against like all of these units if it can ever get in range of them. Um, maybe with the exception of halberdiers, um, it can also be used as like a siege unit because it's so freaking strong. It just destroys buildings pretty quickly as well. But again, this unit's so expensive that you rarely will ever see it. If they, if you ever see like a war elephant in a game, the game is probably already over. It's probably just being used to troll the the other player. But yeah, so I don't know what else to say about this unit. I guess like don't don't make this unit unless you have an amazing economy because this thing is expensive. It's easy to counter with monks. Okay, next up is plumed archer, which is one of the better units in the game, and it's a relatively cheap um, range unit that. Um, has a decent armor. It's mobile. It <laughs> comes from a, it, unlike the rat archer, it comes from a sieve that has a really good economy. And um, yeah, the fact that it's really cheap and that it's mobile like this, and that you have a good economy with the sieve, means that it's something that you should try to. Sh oh no! I messed it up. Um. Yeah, Plume Arch is a good, good unit. You can make it in Castle Age, or you can make it in Imperial Age. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's better than Arbalest, cheaper than Arbalest, I think. Well, maybe not cheaper, but it's definitely stronger than Arbalest. And uh, it's got more HP. It's got 65 when you turn it when it's elite versus like an Arbalest, which is like what 45 or something. I don't know. But yeah, it does. It doesn't do as good against elite skirms. So if you're trying to counter it, elite skirms is good. Um, it also is going to struggle against like cavalry if the cavalry gets in range, but you can kite quite easily with it. I think it actually does pretty decent. Like most range units lose to eagles, but I think the bonus. I think it does do bonus damage versus eagles, so it can survive that. Um, other than that, I don't know. It does. Yeah, I think maybe the the um, elite elephant archer might counter it, but again, you don't really see elite elephant archer very often, so. Don't worry about it. Yeah, not much else to say about this unit, but it's a really good unit, and you should try to go for it. Mayans, remember. Next unit is the Conquistor, which is like arguably like one of the best Castle Age units. It's a Spanish unique unit, and again, it does 18 damage. And the fact that you can make it in Castle Age is what makes it so insane, because it's a mounted cavalry unit, or mounted cav archer. I don't know what to say. If it's a cav archer, it's obviously mounted. Anyways, it does 18 damage. It, the biggest downside is it costs food, so it kind of isn't like super great for your economy, but it doesn't matter because it does so much damage. Like against range units, like if you mass enough of these, you'll you'll just like get in range of them and kill them all. Against Maganels, you can basically three shot them. Against cavalry, you can hit and run for days. So it's not it's really hard to counter. Um, in Imperial Age, you can counter these by making helps and rams. Or like impure or heavy camels can also be quite good against them. And also, 
Yeah, like in Imperial Age, you can actually kill them, but in Castle Age, they're very hard to kill. Arbalos do good against them in Imperial Age. Um, even like a lot of crossbow could do good in Castle Age, but um, once they get mangonels with mixed with the conquistadors, or they get enough conquistadors, it's hard to kill with um, crossbow. Um, and again, that's just because they do so much. They have so much um, attack damage. Uh, so uh, infantry, it's not even a question really. It, the infantry just can get kited all day by these things, so it's really hard to justify making them against infantry civs. Yeah. All right. Next up, elite longbowmen. So this is a Britain's unique unit. It gives bonus range. Um, you you see this unit so every so often. I think the thing is is that you're not gonna like try to make this unit in Castle Age just because it's not that much better than a <laughs> it's not that much better than a arbal or um crossbow or arbalist, but in Imperial Age, if you have a lot of castles, then you can definitely go for this. They have really good range. I think in Imperial Age, they end up getting 6 plus 6 range. So it's it's very good. The downside of these unit, to this unit is that it doesn't... Well, Britons in general don't get thumb rings, so it doesn't shoot that fast. But yeah, the range is insane. I mean, it probably could shoot from where it's standing right now to like here or something like that. It's crazy. So um, again, it does quite good against... like It can kite cavalry units as long as they can't... like outmass them and get in range um it can even do good against like skirmishers just because the skirmishers usually don't have as much range so you can kite them as well it kills siege pretty easily because siege doesn't have as much range um infantry is easy the only units that really counter it pretty good are the um if you get like elite eagle wire there's quite a lot of armor on these things and they will they can do quite good against the longbowmen and um the other unit would be the um, Huskarl, which is the goth unique unit, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, we'll talk about that next. Um, I guess lastly, the, the rams, like you can soak up a lot of the damage by using rams, which prevents them from um, using patrol patrolling to, to do damage. Basically, patrolling is just, for people that don't know, patrolling is just letting your units fire without like really telling them where to fire. They just kind of fire that whatever unit which is is kind of good because it gives you like an even spread of damage because if you focus fire with archers then it does a lot of overkilling which is like you shoot like 40 arrows at like one unit with like one hp left and then it just like so much wasted shots there right but and, and the issue is that if, if if you're not telling them which units to fire at and they're all firing at a ram then you're wasting a lot of shots right there right so anyways that's kind of longbowman again it's just not you're not gonna really use it until like imperial age but yeah so next we'll talk about the Huskarls because I just mentioned it. And I just got to find out where the heck it's at. It's right here. So the Huskarl is the goth unique unit. And you can see here it has a crazy amount of pierce armor, which is more pierce armor than you'll ever need in Castle Age, which is when you can make it. And so Huskarls are usually used in combination with um, pikemen to make like heavy Castle Age pushes. Um, or you can also make them in Imperial Age if you're if you get if you get that far and you have a good economy. But basically, like crossbowmen are limited to seven damage in Castle Age, and Huskarls have eight pierce armor, so the minimum damage that a uh, crossbow can do, or the maximum rather, is one. Meaning that Huskarls basically can run all over crossbowmen in Castle Age, and you just trade insanely well because especially because um, Huskarls aren't that expensive. So they're, they're quite good. The counters to Huskarls are definitely going to be Knights. Knights do quite well against Huskarls. Also, Monks do quite well against Huskarls, but Monks aren't as reliable. But if you see the Huskarls coming and they're not, there's not a lot, like a big mass of them, Monks can be good. Um, another good unit to counter Huskarls is uh, the Militia line, with the exception um, that... Um, they're quite slow. Huskarls are actually quite a fast, they're quite quick compared to militia. The other downside is when you're going against goths, if you go into the militia line, then they can just simply switch into the militia line themselves, and goths have a bonus that allows them to have cheaper militia, so you really can't win that way against them. But yeah, in like a 1v1 situation or even a team game situation, you occasionally see Huskarls in Castle Age, and then also in, in Imperial Age. They're good for raiding, they're good for all sorts of things. Um, and then if you're again if you're against cavalry units, 
you just mix in like you make some Huskarls, some pikemen and then they're like you literally can't be like they can't kill you because if they make range units then all their archers hit the Huskarl and then they don't kill the pikemen and if they make uh all cavalry unit cavalry units then the pikemen just kill them and then if they make infantry units then then uh they make infantry units then what you do is you just make infantry units yourself so gosh this video is getting long man there's so many units hopefully you guys if you're new you stuck with me i don't blame you for leaving i, I don't know how the heck i would watch all this in one go we're almost there Okay, Teutonic Knights, you don't really see them very often. They're super high physical armor. So opposite of, uh, opposite of the Huskarl, which has high pierce armor. These have high physical armor, but they're very slow. Um, they could be used like late game. Um, it, it's very rare that you ever see this unit, but they can be used late game as just like kind of a troll strategy, I suppose. Usually with Teutons, you'd go for like Cavalier or Paladin or something like that instead of Teutonic Knights. But yeah, they are quite strong against like knights and stuff like that and they destroy buildings relatively quickly as well the downsides again are they're extremely slow they're pretty expensive so um i don't want to get into teutonic knights too much even though a lot of people like them they're just not very useful so um but yeah throwing x-men so this is frank's unique unit which actually is used quite often in frank's games because yeah they just they're actually quite good. Like they do good against infantry. Um, they're not as useful against like the, I don't think they do as good against like arbalists and stuff like that. But you can usually mix in like bombard cannons with throwing axemen to to take care of arbalists pretty quick. This, the real nice thing about them is that they do physical damage. And so if somebody tries to push with like rams, the rams die very easily because again rams are weak to physical damage. But again, the nice thing is is that they are um, quite strong. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? I don't know. The nice thing is that they're easy. To, they're actually quite easy to mass because Franks get cheaper castles. So yeah, there's a lot of nice things about uh, throwing axemen. They're kind of they're kind of like similar to hand cannoneers against halberdiers, but uh, they're cheaper than hel they're cheaper gold wise than hand cannoneers are. So they're nice in that sense. Um, I guess like their biggest weaknesses are probably like onagers. Um, I think it's an arbalist probably do okay. I think hand cannoneers actually do quite good against them as well, but again, usually you have a meat shield in front of them, so it's hard for hand cannoneers to ever fight uh, throwing X Men directly. Uh, they can do good against cavalry, but they also can do bad against cavalry if they mass a lot of it. I'd say if you're against cavalry and you had throwing X Men, probably most cases if you knew they're going to mass a lot of it, I'd probably switch to Helbs if I was Franks. But yeah, you don't really see them a whole lot in Castle Age. You see them sometimes, but. Usually it's like a transition made in the Imperial Age. They're not like super overpowered, but they're like pretty strong. They also do bonus damage versus buildings, but it's not something that you see like a whole, like you, you do see it sometimes, but yeah. Other than that, uh, yeah. A lot of these units, gosh, I can talk all day about them, but a lot of them that you, you kind of just have to like see them in action, I suppose, to really kind of understand, but yeah. A lot of, lot of games, you know, a lot of losses. Oh yeah, here's an elite skirmisher kind of snuck in here, I guess. Uh, elite skirms are just strong. They're just a stronger version of skirmishers. They do better. They do good against archers, if you guys remember. Organ guns. We got the organ guns here. Um, it's a gunpowder unit. I think it does bonus damage versus infantry, kind of like the um, hand cannoneers. It's not, a, it's not very fast. Um, the other nice thing about the organ guns is that, you know, you can see each of these pipes for the organ. They fire out um, gunpowder projectiles, so it's got like a blast damage. It's not like a straight up blast damage, but it shoots like several projectiles. They don't all do the same amount of damage. They Like there's one main one and the rest of them do less. But again, if you bunch up a lot of these organ guns together, they do a lot of damage. Like because if you combine the damage they do individually plus all the spread damage they do, they kill a lot of units. Um, the biggest weakness for organ guns is probably the fact that they have a minimum range. So again, um, if units get close to them, they can't shoot them. Um, another big thing is that uh, onagers, it's kind of like a mixed thing. Like onagers do quite well against them, but at the same time, onagers can be killed by them quite easily if, they, if they're if they paying attention. 
So, uh, yeah, other thing, Bombard Cannons do quite well against uh, Organ Guns because the range is just, like, a lot more on Bombard Cannons. Um, but, yeah, the best way to go about killing Organ Guns is probably making, like, lots of Knights in, ma in mass, Bombard Cannons, Onager, um, even, like, Hussars can do good if you... Uh, Hussars can do good if they don't have a lot of them. They can do quite good, but range units are going to die pretty easily against them. And um, melee units also die quite quickly as well. So, yeah. All right, next, Shuttle Warrior. Oh, yeah, by the way, it's Portuguese. Um, yeah, and then the, this you know, was Frank's, the throwing action. So Shuttle Warriors is Ethiopians. It looks like he has a bow in his hands, but no, it's like some cutlass or something. So shuttle warriors are like these really strong infantry units, but they have really low HP and low armor. They're good against, um, I think they're like pretty good in mass against um, like uh, like trash units maybe, and um, even ranged units when the ranged units aren't mass. Shuttle warriors do quite good, but yeah, if they have a lot of ranged units, they get shredded pretty easily. And they also die quite quickly to um, cavalry when the other person has a lot of it, like a lot of it. Um, when I say cavalry, typically I mean ca um, knights, cavalier, paladin, not so much camels, but yeah. The other nice thing about shoulder warriors is they do a lot of extra bonus damage versus buildings. So they kill buildings quite quickly. And they're also made quite quickly. There's a technology that you can research in the castle that allows the shoulder warriors to be made like super fast. So um, I think with Ethiopians, typically you... Arbalists are your main unit just because they have the faster fire rate, but shuttle warriors kind of double as like a siege unit as well because of how fast they kill buildings. So if you can take control with arbalists, then you can usually finish off like if they're using skirms as like their next line of defense against your arbalists. Shuttle warriors do quite good against skirms, I think. But um, but yeah, they kill buildings quite quick. But yeah, you don't usually see them in Castle Age. Uh, they're just not that popular. They, they're just too weak. They they don't do good at raiding unless you have a ton of them. Where, like, they die to TCs quite fast, but if you can kill the TC fast, then obviously you don't have to worry about it. So, um, Probably the last thing I note about Shuttle Warriors is that they do do good against some infantry units. I'm not specifically sure which of the units they do like super well against. I'm guessing they do quite well against like Huskarls, just because of the extra, like, so much attack damage. Um, and also... Yeah, I, I bet they do quite good against Huskarls. Um, I think they do quite good against Eagle Warriors as well, because if you look at Eagle Warriors, they do 7 damage, whereas Shuttles do, I think it would be 16 if they're not upgraded, which is twice as much damage. So I think they're good against Eagles as well. Um, but yeah, against range units or other like stronger infantry units, I don't think they're as, as good. I, I would, I'd be hazardous, I'd hazardous to say they're better than champions. I don't think so. All right, next up is the, oh, I don't even, I have no idea. I'll save this unit later. I have literally no idea what the unit is. Also don't know what the Keshek, I think I know what the Keshek does, but I'm not going to, we'll, we'll look at the, at the end. Okay, so next is the Genoese Crossbowman. So this is the um, Italian unique unit. So the Konotiro was actually um, a unique unit that they got as well, but they get two, they have multiple unique units. I think they actually have three. No, no, that's Portuguese. That gets the Caravel. Um. No, but the Genoese Crossman does bonus damage versus cavalry, so it's a ranged unit that does bonus versus cavalry, which is really strong. Because so it makes kiting like cavalry super like easy. Um, and I heard that they also um, improve the fire rate of this unit, so it makes it a lot more viable. The biggest weakness is is that it doesn't do any bonus damage versus like mangonels or something. So if you make them in Castle Age, then mangonels are probably going to overrun or probably going to be used to counter you quite easily. And castles are co quite expensive in Castle Age, so I think that it's best to save this unit until you get to Imperial Age. Um, but yeah, it's probably it, I think it's stronger than Arbalus in Imperial Age. It does bonus damage versus cavalry. Um, so yeah, it's going to basically have the same bonus as like the Archer line. Um, with the exception of bonus versus cavalry, and yeah, I don't know what else to say. Again, it's gonna do good against infantry, just like arbalist. There's nothing else really to say about that. I think. Um, yeah. Next unit, Genitour. So Genitour is actually a unique unit for Berbers, which we already talked about. The Camel Archer is also a unique unit, which I think is right. 
here. No, here. So this is a unit that is made out of the range, or is this unit that's made out of the castle. So the Gen of Tour is, uh, again, the range unit. And it's basically a, skir a mounted skirm. It costs a little bit more food, um, but uh, yeah, you're, it's a lot more mobile, obviously, than an elite skirm. And uh, like if we look at the elite skirm here, and we look at this, it's a lot more mobile. So these are good against like cav archers or archers in general. I'd say the biggest weakness is the fact that they have less range. So against like halberdiers, if you're not paying attention, the halberdiers can sneak up on them quite easily and, and do quite a lot of damage. Especially because norm normal skirmishers don't have a like the halberdiers don't do bonus damage versus normal skirmishers. So um, it's easy for halberdiers to like sneak up on them and kill them quite easily. Um, they also have a minimum range similar to skirms, so you gotta watch out for that. Um, but yeah, they kind of just function like normal skirmishers, except they're mobile and they cost a little bit more. But other than that, they're they're pretty similar. Uh, um, yeah. So we're starting to lose control of where these units are at. Whoa. All right, next up, samurai. So samurai is Japanese unique unit. Um, it's an infantry unit. Again, you're not going to see it a whole lot until later on in the game um, because it's easily kited by archers and it's weaker than knights usually. I think it's weaker than knights at least. But um, it's quite good when you can mass them. They attack very very quickly. They have a bonus damage versus unique units. So like I said earlier when we talked about the Jaguar Warrior, which is right here, the Samurai actually beat the Jaguar Warrior even though the Jaguar Warrior is like Debatably, it looks like it's stronger, but really the, the samurai is stronger because there's a bonus versus them. Um, I think the samurai still loses to the Teutonic Knight, which is that unit we talked about before that's not very useful. But the samurai costs like very little gold. I think it's like again 20, 25, 30 gold, something like that. So it's quite strong. Um, it's also going to be stronger than like a it's going to be stronger than a champion. Biggest weaknesses for the samurai are going to be like massed up uh, range units, gunpowder units. Um, Cavalier. I think it's about as strong as a Cavalier, honestly, or like as, as efficient as like resource efficient as Cavalier. So I, I wouldn't go as far as saying it would lose versus Cavalier, especially because of the fact that you can mix in Halberdier to like, kill the Cavalier quite easily. But I would say that it's weaker than Paladin. Um, other than that, it kills buildings quite quickly, and yeah, so you make it try to make it in, like Imperial Age if you're Japanese usually. It depends on the situation, but if they're not going for like hand candy or something like that, or like a lot of range units, then even if they are going for a lot of range units, what you do is with uh, Japanese, make a lot of samurai, then make trebs. Like they can't kill the trebs unless they kill the samurai, and they ain't killing the samurai. You know, make them force them to fight. All right, next unit is the Elite Mangadai, which for the longest time has been the best unit in the game. Uh, I don't know; it's kind of debatable whether whether or not it is still but it's still quite a good unit so this is the mongols elite um uh, mongols um unique unit oh i messed up uh. so it's a cavalry range unit with a bonus damage bonus damage versus siege but then it also has the same bonus damage as like the other units i think where it does bonus versus um halberdier and it also has a relatively quick firing rate so um yeah, I mean, whoa. When you mass up a lot, like if you look here, like so I have the Mangadai, I'll even attack this unit. So the Mangadai is 50 HP. Watch. Oh, wait, did I attack the wrong unit? So this is 8 damage. And this had 37 health. And this has 7 armor. So I did 6. 13. Yeah, I think it's plus 5. Plus 5 to siege. Anyways, this unit is just really good. It's versatile. It has a decent damage output. Um, bonus versus siege, which makes it like if someone's trying to push you with siege, you just like run in, kill the siege, run out. Um, again, like the cavalry archer units are just very strong because you can always pick your fights with them and 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's such a strong unit. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. Cavalry unit. So it's good against art. Uh, I think maybe it, it could struggle against crossbows early on just because the range I don't think is quite as good. I think crossbow has put one more range on it. But 
Again, like in Castle Age, even in Castle Age, like if they make Mangonels to try to defend, you just snipe them. The only way they defend against uh, Mangadai and uh, Castle Age, Camels I think are pretty good, and um, Elite Skirms can be good, but Elite Skirms are easy to counter, so it's a little bit questionable whether or not you should do that. But yeah, they, they shred they shred Helbs and Pikemen even though they have a bo even though those units have bonuses versus them they they kill them very quickly they kill other infantry very quickly with maybe the exception of Huskarls and the Eagle Warriors yeah Eagle Warriors probably Eagles and Huskarls do quite good against the uh, Mangadai I think but um, against cavalry units you can just hit and run all day and that's pretty much every cavalry unit there's n not really any that's not including yeah so yeah that's the Mongols Ma elite Mangadai. Next is Mamelukes, which I heard I think got buffed. I, I don't know how. It was maybe an increased rain, or uh, increased, uh, damn it, increased uh, fire rate. Um, Mamelukes do uh, physical damage. This isn't range instead of instead of range damage. So kind of like the throwing axemen. They do good against rams. They do good against mangonels. They do a good against. Uh, a lot of things. They also do bonus damage versus um, cavalry units, so just like normal camels. So if you see here, I do 10 damage. He has one armor. Should do 9 damage, but it does 21 damage. So against elephants, at least, it appears to have a plus 12 bonus. So if you're against cavalry units, um, elite mamelukes are very good. Probably the only things that can counter them. Maybe heavy camels can counter them if they're not paying attention and they're not kiting. Arbalus probably do quite good because I think Arbalists do bonus damage versus Mamelukes. But um, if they make enough Mamelukes, I'm guessing just with the extra HP they get, that they could probably kill Arbalists as well. Um, Skirms probably do okay as well because they are considered a cavalry archer. Uh, but yeah, Knights, Camels, Asars, all those units die. Infantry units die. Halberdiers, I, I don't think, I think do, don't do so good. Kind of like the Mangadai, the Mangadai. The unit we just talked about can just hit and run all day against halberdiers. So, yeah. But again, mamelukes are very expensive, very gold. They cost a lot of gold. It's very rare that you see them in in one v ones at least. But yeah. Next unit is the let's talk about the Kipchak. Kipchak. It's a very fast firing new unit by the by the Cumans, and uh, I think it might be the best unit now in the game. It might have surpassed the Mangadai. Um, the fire rate of this thing is like absolutely insane. Um, probably the biggest uh, downside to this unit is just how how uh, how little attack it does. It compensates for it with the attack speed, but for units that have high um, pierce armor, it doesn't matter because even if you have a really high attack speed, if you're still only doing one damage, it just doesn't really add up to much. So like Huskarls do very well, very good against it. Um, what were the other high pierce armor units? Um, Paladins probably do okay as well, just because they have quite high pierce armor. Um, what are the other units that have high pierce? Eagle Warriors. Eagle Warriors do quite well against Skipjacks just because of the pierce armor. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah. Ooh, this one has three pierce armor. That's quite good. But yeah, I think this unit's quite good. It costs um, wooden gold. It's it's a uh, cavalry archer range unit. It shoots fast. Let's see how fast it shoots. So like here, the mangal is 50 health. Yeah, that's pretty quick. Where's the where's like a normal cav archer? Or no, where's the mangadai? Wait. Wait. Uh, yeah, this is turning into a crap show. Let's see how fast these. Fire. Yeah, it's like it fires like 1.5 times faster than the Mangadai or something like that. It's pretty crazy. But yeah, it's a pretty versatile unit. Again, I just wouldn't make it versus Huskarls or um, Huskarls or um, Elite Eagle Warriors. It, it wouldn't do so great against it. But all the other units, I think it probably does okay. Maybe like War Wagons, it probably doesn't do so great against either, but yeah. Um, yeah, if you're going to counter it, make like Elite Skirm, Heavy Gamble, that kind of thing, probably is the best way to go. If you, if you can do it, otherwise, aye, 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 or Paladin. Otherwise, you're kind of in tough troubles. Alright, next unit is the Elite Conic. 
which is a Bulgarian unit that can be made from the Cray Post or the Castle. And it's a unit that once it dies, it turns into an infantry unit that's a bit weaker. I'd say like the, the, the nice thing about this unit is that it probably does okay against um, pikemen, halberdier, because the thing is, even if the cavalry unit dies, the infantry unit is really strong, is still pretty strong, and the uh, I don't think that the halberdier and pikemen do bonus damage versus the infantry unit. So that's kind of like one of the nice things is that if someone just tries to make full pikemen to defend against your elite conics, then you just like you probably lose a lot of the cavalry, but then the infantry version of it runs it over. So the other nice thing is that can be made from the cray posts, which are half basically half the cost of a castle, so you can mass them a lot easier. Stat-wise, they're very similar to the cavalier, a little bit weaker than well, actually they're a little bit stronger than the cavalier. So um, I just want to check the resource cost for these things because let's just see. I don't think. Let's see. I think they might lack a little extra pierce armor. They lack the pierce armor um, that like a paladin gets. But uh, yeah, as far as like resource cost goes, they are basically um, same cost as like a as like a, a, a cavalier. It's probably with Bulgarians just based on like their tech tree. I don't know if I would. I mean, they get heavy cav archers and they get the bracer on that. I feel like I would probably opt to go for um, the conics, the conics though, over the. Uh... I'd probably go for the Conics though over the uh, Paladins, maybe with Bulgarians. But yeah, they, they are, like it says in the thing, they are kind of weak to monks because if the monk converts them, then they get your whole Conic, which includes the infantry unit, I think. Um, but yeah, if you made a lot of these and then they had a bunch of halberdiers, then basically any of the Conics that died turned to infantry and then they kill the halberdiers quite easily, probably. Um, the other thing is against archers, like even if they like kill the original Conix, then the infantry, unless they're like constantly kiting, they're going to lose a lot. Um, yeah. Even if you're against cavalry, too. I mean, against camels, they probably get killed pretty quickly, but again, the infantry comes out and then the infantry kills the camels. So it's like, whatever you can use to counter these units, like it's not doesn't work against the infantry version, really. The only ex only exception would be against these like cavalry archer units. They could do quite good because they could kite quite easily the cav archers and the, or they could quite kite quite easily the uh, cavalry and the infantry. So I think that that they're, they're the best unit that you could probably make for uh, Bulgarians. But I don't know if just because their pierce armor is kind of low, I'm not super sold on them in terms of castle like a castle age unit i still think knights might be a bit better because then you can at least raid in castle age with the with them okay so next is the uh i don't know it is the litis not sure that's probably a butcher but um it's a lithuanian unit and and before it's not lithuanian unit i don't know i've never even used this unit before so um okay so it ignores armor sweet Sweet. So this unit probably. Uh, so this is kind of it. Kind of reminds me a little bit of like a cataphract in terms of. Yeah, I mean I, this unit I'm, I'm guessing just does very good against um, does very good against like paladins and stuff like that because again, 14 damage, two armor. I mean you get the armor buff, but where's the paladin at here? But oh, the paladin only has two armors too. But like once you get the armor on this unit and it's at like um, what is it uh, five armor five five physical armor and the paladin's at five physical armor, the paladin is gonna not be able to like if it has 18 attack it still is effect like it only does 13 damage versus the litis or whatever. But this unit will do um, this unit will do all 18 attack to the paladin so it'll be even stronger than the paladin. So I think this unit is. It seems like it is um, 
kind of like the alternative to the Paladin for Lithuanians. Although, let me look at something, because is it, with Lithuanians, is it cavalry or is it knights? Oh, yeah. So Lithuanians also have this bonus where each garrison relic gives them plus one attack to the cavalry units. So yeah, if you combine this, like, the if you get, like, a bunch of the relics, and then you combine that with the armor thing, I mean, you kill a lot of... You could make a really strong unit here. I mean, you could basically make a unit with uh, 23 attack. Let's see. Does it get Blast Furnace? Ah, oh, it doesn't get Blast Furnace. Oh, that sucks. So you wouldn't get 23 attack. You'd get 21 attack. 2, plus 2, plus 5, if you maxed out. Yeah, if you had all the relics, you have 21 attack on these things. And that's like 21 like full attack. Like They can't block it, basically. There might be, so yeah, it would do good against knights. I know you do good against his boyers, because boyers, if you guys remember, was the Slav, Slav unit somewhere here, right here. It says six armor, so it ignores that. That's pretty insane. Um, even like, I wonder how much the elephants have. I, nah, they don't really have that much. They don't have that much armor. But wonder how it does against the rams. Actually, let's see, because if it ignores the armor of the ram, does that mean it does less damage? So 14, is this just going to be 14? Oh yeah, so it actually does less damage versus the ram, because the ram ignores the, the negative defense bonus. That's kind of funny. I wonder if it ignores the armor defense bonus on the, on the, uh, is it just the units or the, or is it also buildings, like ignores all armor? Sorry if I'm. I wish I knew this stuff, but everyone's got to learn sometime, right? Yeah, maybe it ignores armor on buildings as well. Let's see. I mean, I guess I can just attack the building and see. I don't know if the house actually has any building armor, though. That's the issue. Yeah, I mean, it does full damage against the building, so that would make it a really good unit to kill buildings as well. I don't know. I see this actually unit being useful in, like, Imperial Age and stuff like that. I mean, it's still hard countered by like halberd ears i'm sure but if you mixed in um if you mixed in like elite uh this uh if you mixed in um hand cannoneers or uh skirmishers or even um cav archers if you could afford it then i could see it being very good all these civs all these new civs are actually really quite good all right and the last unit is the keshek and that is the uh is the uh, Tatar Tatars 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 uh, unit, and I believe it generates some sort of gold. So ta generates gold when fighting other units. Speed hit points stable. Keshek seven hundred more resistance monks. Let's see. I just want to check the upgrades on it, so it gets full upgrades. So. Yeah, it's similar to, like with full upgrades, it would be similar to a Paladin with a little less um, physical armor. The cost was, I think, 50-80, right? If I remember. Ah. Okay, we're almost, we're almost there. We're almost there. 58. So yeah, it's the same. It's a little bit more expensive than a Paladin gold-wise, but let's see. But it generates gold, though, too. So let's see if it generates gold off attacking a building. Alright, so far no gold has been generated. I'm just gonna let it sit for a little while longer. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's generating any gold here. Let's attack a knight. You know, it might not generate gold just because I'm not the sieve that. I'm not the actual sieve. Yeah, I think it's just because I'm not, I have to actually be the sieve in order to generate the gold from it. That's kind of unfortunate, especially if, like, converted ones don't generate gold for the enemy. Yeah, I guess it's kind of hard to tell, like, how good this unit is. It's similar to a paladin. I, I would expect that, like, if you got this thing fully upgraded, that it, I, I'd probably prefer to make this instead of paladins, just because of the fact that, uh, well, they don't even get paladins, so it doesn't, well, I'm not even the right sieve. 
yeah, I mean, it's either this or the Stepalancer. I, I think that probably the Stepalancer is probably better just the way it is now, but I think that this Keshek probably will surpass it once the, the Stepalancer gets nerfed. But anyways, I think that covers it for all the sieves. I spent more than enough time going through everything, and I still there's probably still a lot of people that have just started playing that are confused as can be. Again, the best advice is to just kind of go back through the... Um, go play some games and maybe look back through the tech tree. Check out the link I have in the description below uh, just to look through some of the stats again. Look through the tech tree, though. Just, like, go through it in your mind. Just be thinking, like, archers. It says here, again, like, what it's strong to, what it's weak to. Um, it doesn't include everything, but if you combine going through the tech tree here and looking at the units and then looking at the stats on the on the link that I provided, then you should be able to, you know, within like a short period of time, maybe a week or something, have a really good understanding of like what units are good against which other units. And that's going to be like a really great start to getting into the game. Um, you know, being able to make those split second decisions on, you know, what unit to make at a given time, it, that takes more than just knowing which units are good at, you know, when. It, it really requires, uh, you know, experience. And it doesn't necessarily mean it takes a lot of experience, but it's, it's not something that, you know, there's a lot of games where I definitely lost knowing that I should have, like, after the word, afterwards, I should have made a unit that I didn't make, right? And um, that happens to everybody, though. So, but yeah, I, my best advice from this point on is to just, again, go through the tech tree, click on the link that I provided for, below, whether or not it's AOE2stats.net or some other link, look through the units, see if you can remember what bonuses and, you know, what units are good against. And, um, and yeah, uh, I guess that kind of covers it. If anyone else has any, if anyone else actually got to this point and is like, man, there's other guides out there, or other links out there or whatever that are, I find, you know, I think are very helpful to people that are trying to learn. Let me know. I'll, I'll throw those links. Let me know in the comments. I'll throw those links into the description just so that people can make use of them. All right. All right, in the next video, I think I'm going to go over, now that we've kind of covered all the units here, I think I'm going to go over the hotkeys. So um, stay tuned for that one. I'm going to try to get like an on-screen keyboard so that people can see what exact, exactly what I'm typing and stuff like that. And then from there, I've actually been considering maybe going into doing some of the campaigns just to like kind of rehash some of the unit stuff and, and the hot, using the hotkeys and stuff like that um, just to kind of help people get started. But Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, for those who stuck around, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.